We recently kicked off our recap of the Halo series in chronological order, beginning with the story of Halo Reach. Unlike Microsoft, however, we haven't forgotten about Halo Wars, which really should have come first, but you know, better late than never, right? As the first game in the series chronology, Halo Wars sets up some important things for future games, and here we're going to talk about its events from beginning to end. Before we go ahead, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos every single day, and your support really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's start. Halo Wars is set in the year 2531, about two decades before the fall of Reach and the subsequent events of Halo Combat Evolved, the first game in the series. At this time, humanity has been under attack from the Covenant for about six years, with the fanatical collective of alien races hell-bent on destroying the human race and completely wiping it out. The game's story focuses on the crew of the UNSC ship Spirit of Fire, which is led by Captain James Cutter, with other major characters in the ship's crew being the no-nonsense marine John Forge and the ship's AI Serena. As Halo Wars begins, the UNSC Spirit of Fire is sent to the human colony of Harvest, which has been almost completely destroyed by Covenant forces. Cutter soon discovers that there's been a lot of Covenant activity around the northern pole of the planet, where they seem to have excavated something of great value to them. The Spirit of Fire crew takes on the Covenant forces, defeating them in battle and managing to prevent them from destroying whatever it is that they've uncovered so that it doesn't fall into human hands. After their victory, they discover that what the Covenant had excavated is actually a facility built by the ancient alien civilization known as the Forerunners. Soon after, a civilian researcher by the name of Professor Ellen Anders arrives on the scene and deduces that the facility houses an interstellar map pointing to various locations. Gathering data from the facility, Anders is able to figure out that the Covenant are next headed to Arcadia, another human colony. The Covenant soon launch a counterattack on the facility, and after repelling their forces, the Spirit of Fire crew depart from Harvest, in pursuit of the Covenant, with Arcadia being their next destination. Arcadia, much like Harvest and many other human planets and colonies at the time, is under heavy attack from the enemy, and when the Spirit of Fire arrives, it finds itself facing heavy resistance. The ship's crew joins forces with a local group of Spartan soldiers known as the Red Team, and assists them in fighting off the Covenant and helping evacuate the people of Perth City. They eventually set up a defensive perimeter around the city, and when Spartan Team Omega eventually arrives and provides them with added support, they're able to drive back the attacking Covenant forces. Now, with a little bit of breathing room, the group is able to figure out what to do next. A particular site on the planet full of undiscovered Forerunner ruins seems to be the area seeing the most Covenant activity, to the point where they have even enacted a massive energy shield to allow them to conduct whatever activities they are engaged in without too much resistance from human forces. That of course is where the UNSC needs to turn its attention as well. In order to destroy the energy shield, the UNSC employs experimental plasma equipment to break through it, while a grueling battle then ensues against a partially complete scarab. The UNSC manages to destroy the Scarab and punch through Covenant defenses, and Anders and Forge begin inspecting the area. Their work, however, is cut short, because not long afterward, one Ripa Morami arrives on the scene. Morami is a warlord belonging to the Sengeli race, known to humans as elites, and currently Morami holds the position of Arbiter, who's supposed to be one of the Covenant's most powerful and influential military leaders. Red Team arrives on the scene, but a little too late. The Arbiter injures Forge and takes Anders captive, and then immediately the Covenant forces pull back. They flee from the planet and enter slip space using their faster than light drive, and the Spirit of Fire is forced to give pursuit. When they emerge out of slip space, they find themselves in a distant, unknown location, close in proximity to a mysterious planet that no one seems to know anything about. This planet, as it turns out, is an ancient forerunner installation known as Etrin Harborage. Etrin Harborage was a shield world, which were meant to be the only known places where one could find safety from the destruction caused by the activation of the Halo Array. There's a lot more to that, of course, but we'll get to that in a later episode. For now, let's keep our attention on the Covenant forces here, the Spirit of Fire, and what goes down between those two opposing forces. Things on the shield world quickly take a turn for the worse, to no one's surprise. The Covenant and the humans, it turns out, aren't the only ones here, and both forces are attacked by a large swarm of an undiscovered parasitic alien species known as the Flood. We'll be talking a lot more about the Flood in later episodes, so we'll go into greater detail into what they're all about later on. But for now, all you need to know is this. They're bad news. 
The Spirit of Fire, barely surviving against the Flood Onslaught, manages to discover the source of a signal, which seems to be a large body of water. When they arrive there, the body of water literally splits open, revealing the Shield World to be a hollow, artificial installation with its own interiors and even a miniature sun. From the insides of the Shield World, scores of automated Forerunner defense drones known as Sentinels emerge and immediately begin attacking the Flood. While the Sentinels and the Shield World's own defense systems deal with the Flood, the Spirit of Fire enters the installation's interiors, takes on and defeats attacking Covenant forces, and sets up a base of operations. So what's going on with the Arbiter and Anders though? For starters, why did he even need her to begin with? Well, Anders as it turns out is a Reclaimer. And what the heck is a Reclaimer? Reclaimer is an ancient term coined by the Forerunners. Reclaimers, you see, are the only people who can activate Forerunner activations like Halo Rings and Shield Worlds and other things. And only Forerunners, and humans it seems, can be Reclaimers. Again, we'll be talking about more of this later on, so keep that in mind. Back to the present though. What the Arbiter needs Anders for is to activate the Shield World so that he can then take control of a fleet of highly advanced Forerunner warships housed within, and then use them to completely obliterate humans in their war against the Covenant. Luckily enough, Anders manages to escape, and eventually reunites with the Spirit of Fire crew, where they devise their final plan for how to deal with the Arbiter and his forces. They remove the Spirit of Fire's FTL drive, intending to detonate it so that the chain reaction will then destroy the Shield World's miniature sun, and in turn, the Shield World itself, which of course will keep the Forerunner fleet from falling into Covenant hands. The Spirit of Fire crew launches its final attack against the Covenant, who put up formidable resistance. The Arbiter's group of elite soldiers is killed by the Spartans of Red Team, while the Arbiter himself is killed by Forge, who uses one of his own energy swords against him. During the fight, however, the FTL drive is damaged. As such, Forge chooses to stay behind and detonate the device manually, knowing full well what it will mean for him. Son, I have a feeling before this is over, we'll need every last Spartan in the fight. I can do this. Report back to the ship. Good luck, sir. It's been an honor. The UNSC forces fall back to the Spirit of Fire, flee from the Shield World, and manage to get far enough away from it while Forge detonates the reactor, destroying the installation completely. Of course, with the Spirit of Fire in completely uncharted territory and far away from human space, without their FTL drive, they have no way of getting back home quickly, which means the journey is now going to take years, decades even. The crew enters cryonic storage. A few years later, the UNSC declared the Spirit of Fire, quote, lost with all hands. In a post credit scene, the ship's AI Serena wakes up Cutter, telling him that something has happened, setting up events for Halo Wars 2. It will be a while before we get to Halo Wars 2 though, because the next game we'll be talking about is Halo Combat Evolved, so stay tuned. And with that, we reached the end of the video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.